Welcome, Paula. Glad you're back. Illuminated <laughs> Paula. How are you? I'm better, thank you. I'm glad you're back. Do we have a packet for her, or did I steal hers? You might have stolen hers. It's okay. I'm you got got one here. I always we watch your stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, anyway. oh, she gave you your Since Steve's not here, we can. Feeling better? Much better. There you go. Thank you. Steve's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We will call the meeting for the Conservation Commission for February 19th open. I will entertain a motion for our minutes from February 5th. Motion to approve. I'll second. Move second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. And first on our agenda is Maple Street slash Scotland Street, abbreviated notice of intent. If you want to set up, I will read it into the record. Under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40, if Mass General Law is amended in the West Bridgewater Wetland Protection Bylaw Rules and Regulations, the West Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing February 19, 2019, in the McDonald Brown Conference Room, 65 North Main Street, for a abbreviated notice of intent for the Barato Development LLC to verify a wetland resource area in their bordering vegetative wetlands within a buffer zone. It's Map 72, Lot 3 along Maple Street, Scotland Street, and we're open. And we have the cards. You, anyone in the audience? Uh, yeah, we have. Could you could turn it okay. just to here for those folks? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. For the record, my name is Rebecca. I work for Silver Engineering. At the request of the West Bridgewater Commission, we filed an ANRAD for a supporting piece. No, that's not the right one. No. No? No. We're just going to say that. There you go. That looks better. There we go. So this is a piece to the uh, neighbor uh, Bridgewater where we're doing some development. And so we wanted to confirm with West Bridgewater Commission that they felt we are outside of the jurisdiction of the buffers for our activity. So we have the riverfront and the wetlands flagged by Tim Thompson. Um, and I believe we've met your town river delegation. I'm looking at it. Mr. Delano, hoping he agrees. <laughs> no. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to shake you up a little bit. Is that do, it? I, uh, do you have a um, diagram of what it, the development looks like? No. It's about the diagram of the development. It's about the wetland line right here. I know. But yes, I do. <laughs> I have some small handouts if you'd like. Oh, good. That would. I, I know it has no bearing on it, but okay. I thought that. No, nope, it's fine. Somehow I knew. <laughs> Somehow I knew, but I knew. Okay, so. Would that. you mind just showing these folks where the, 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 the wetland, wetland line? line is, where the 50 is, and the 100? Yeah, you bet. So here's the riverfront, and then we have the wetland line. And then with the wetland line, you have the 100 foot buffer. Okay. With the riverfront, you have a 100 and a 200. Right. And so all the work in Bridgewater is actually outside of the 100 foot here, and it's actually be north of this line right in here. So all the work in Bridgewater are you the only butter really quite curious about Possibly, this? Yeah. Because that will come right up to you. <laughs> all right, so here's your version of it so that I can show you. Okay. This is the 100 foot that I mentioned on top that were outside the jurisdiction that I believe. And this is um, the beginning of that right of way, ancient right of way, and then this is the piece that we're out of completely. All right. So that ancient right of way is right here. So everything we're doing is south of that. And then we're going to again. That is the one you folks are interested in? I'm not really sure because I'm looking at because it's another Scotland. Right, right, right. And they get that, notification oh, for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> this may not be the one here. Beyond the Town River into Bridgewater. 
this is Bridge Road. Like down by the so park we, facility. This is the right across the street. Right across the street. Yes, what used to be the blueberry farms. <laughs> yep. Yes, yes. That's okay, it. all right. I'll do the comparison. <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's, it's real. It's here. The, uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm dad and it's a landmark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a medical dispenser. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Two of them. Yes, this is the one of them was over here and one of them was literally across the driveway to that other one. Okay. I'm just confused because it said maple in Scotland. Well, because Which maple, yeah, this one is West Bridgewater. This starts yes. West Bridgewater, and this is an unconstructed portion right. of maple. Wow. <laughs> That's why that's that's right. Because now maple will go all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't see it. So this is Scotland, no. and then maple actually cuts through and comes around. Right, okay. Yeah, so that's where we are. It's an unconstructed, right. Right. It's an unconstructed portion of your area. Okay, thank you. It's quite a while. Used, it used to be yes. the side pay rollway. Back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Way back in the day. Crosses the skim milk bridge. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. That's, so that's, the right. <laughs> yep. okay. that's, that's the one. Yep. That's the one. Back in the day, it was the one that okay. we used to travel on. Yeah. So here's the town okay. line here. So you shouldn't right. see the any. Okay. There. Okay. So there's it enough has vegetation no bearing on what's okay. sort of yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is the riverfront here. The green dash line is the riverfront. This is the 200 repair. Yeah. This is the development in Bridgewater. Right over the town line. Like you the can have area we have is this here, which is out of our jurisdiction. All right. And, and I may have it, but I'll take it down the middle. Oh, okay. John? Uh, as as my report indicates that um, we uh, contacted Silva Engineering early on and explained about the mean annual high water as being what we consider the boundary for the bank. And um, initially there were blue flags uh, along the, the actual bank of the river when the water was down. Yeah. And... Um, and so I saw that those had been changed to back where the flooding now occurs. So uh, I have no issue with it, and it doesn't affect their project in Bridgewater. So I would recommend uh, a positive, uh, not a positive, a uh, uh, accurate determination for the ORAD when we get a DEP file number, because we don't have one. I reached out to them. They received it. It hasn't been punched into the computer. We will have to check with. So uh, I would recommend continuing it to the next meeting. You don't have to come. We'll just um, do the administrative approval at that point. Okay. If the commission goes along with my recommendation. Anybody in the audience? Questions? Comments? Concerns? Anything? Is, it, is this a um, housing development? No, this is a distribution warehouse. Okay. And on, on that side of the river. 350,000 square foot Eight warehouse. Right. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> well, it's yeah, just over the bridge water. Line. Just How many acres of Eight where? acres of building. Wow. And I'm told it's a third the size of Amazon. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of what? Amazon's warehouse. Third, third oh, wow. Size. And, uh, and then. I'm like, okay. Well, when I plow that road, where am I going to turn around now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the medical, medical dispensary. dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need is a town truck driving through there. <laughs> and me behind the wheel. Turning around. Turn turn around. around. Well, then we have two ins and outs. There you go. Keep on going in the You know what you've been doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm fine. Hearing nothing, I'll entertain a motion to continue to our next meeting, which would be March 4th. Motion to continue to March 4th. I'll second. Move second. All those in favor? Aye. We'll move. Like John said. Just a formality. It no is. sense coming out unless you have another one that night. No, I. Don't. At this point, I don't think you do. I but don't think I do. I think we would have missed the deadline now anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Yep. We have the other one down there, South Elm and Maple Street extension for an order of resource area delineation. Interesting. 
name is Greg Driscoll, Jacob's Driscoll Engineering, presenting uh, Chips of Developers for Chips of States. And I remember back in 2015, we uh, filed an internet for property. Um, since then, we've been work we worked through. Uh, and a comprehensive permit with zoning board, and we're still working with DEP <coughs> on uh, wastewater. And um, haven't had a decision from them on that yet, still working through that. Um, so that's why the project continues, and we haven't filed a notice of intent yet. Um, we do intend to file a notice of intent once we get to the point of uh, an agreement with um, DEP on the wastewater plant and, and the groundwater permits and all that type of stuff. So that's kind of the hold up. Um, so we had already extended this once, um, and it expires currently in April of this year. So we'll have the head of the curve here and get another extension so we can keep working with the DP and get this going. This uh, was originally delineated by Goddard Consulting, and I believe they represented the project for the NRI filing for you guys. Correct. Where's this going to be now? Is this cell phone the Maple Street extension? We're right next to the project you just saw. Next to what? The project that, that was just up here. They're right here. So we're oh, on the other side of the town river. Yeah. Oh, is that? Oh. oh. The corn, yeah. Yeah. corn field. Yeah. The big corn the, field. Yep. So it's cell down? Yeah, yeah that goes up around. The it starts the there and then goes. Uh, it's not all right. I know it's there. It's the Paper Street and then the other street. Oh, okay. Join any comments? Um, I mean, it's can you give us a, a little bit of an idea of what um, is going on with DEP? Um, sure it's the My name meeting. is Fisher Hashem. I'm, I'm the developer. Um, <clears throat> DEP is way understaffed and way overworked. It takes seven months to get any response back. Um, <clears throat> and we're still at their mercy now, but we reached the last, we had the last meeting with them about three weeks ago, and we, that's for the uh, water discharge permit for the sewer treatment plant. And um, we were, we are told that within the next couple of weeks we'll be hearing from them uh, on on the water discharge permit. <clears throat> but that's the hold up. We've been diligently working since that, that approval uh, with them, but it's really, really tough uh, to get them to even say yay or nay. Just, mm. just to contact them is tough. But so we, we've met all. I mean, we answered all their questions, uh, and gave them all the studies, and we met at their uh, offices in Lakeville with their Boston expert and all that, and we answered all their questions, and we're waiting to hear from a final verdict within the next couple of weeks that we were promised. So when you say water treatment, sewage, sewage treatment? Yes. Is going to be a, a separate? On the mine. What do you a mean? A private it's, system. It's, it's not going to be uh, like a, you're going to be treating a, from what it sounds like to me, is like you're going to be treating the water, turning it into clean water. Yes. Like a treatment plant. Is this sewage treatment plant? Oh. Yeah. So it's going to actually be a treatment plant. Correct. For that development. Correct. But to, to, to do that, you need to get what's called a water discharge permit. Because so the resulting water, after it's treated, it needs to go someplace. So it basically you're going to discharge it out into the uh, flood area? Uh, no, it's a groundwater discharge permit. Groundwater. So that means so that... How much, how much water is going to be going in? About oh. About about 20, 20, 26,000 gallons a day. Through the bottom, seeping into the ground. Wow. and. That's why DEP's looking at it so closely because when you're putting that much um, effluent into the ground, instead of just discharging it out into a stream or something, it it uh, tends to raise the groundwater in the whole area. Right. So they've been putting them through those uh, calculations to see how that would affect water it. Water mounding and all that. And and we're not treated to a much higher degree than typical. We're not. We're not here to to make the case for that before you. Right. No, right. I just, right. I just, no. I just, when you said that, it just kind of got me off guard. I'm like, it's actually going to be a separate plant. I know it has nothing to do with right. us, but has it, has it a, any of their um, 
decisions affected the number of units? I mean, has it changed that from what was approved, let's say, by the ZBA? Uh, it has not. It, okay. it's, it's, it has not. Hmm. So um, my recommendation is that since um, they're this close, that another year's extension would get them enough time to file a notice of intent, which would then uh, be using the extended line and the notice of intent is good for three years, so after that, so. Okay. Any questions? From could you, I'm sorry, could you just describe the lines that the last engineer did, just so we could have an understanding of what we're looking at, please? So the light blue line, yep. those are the, um, the wetlands? Okay. The flag boarding wetlands. This is Mina Ohio. I'm sure this is the flag wetland here. This is Mina Ohio, so that's the edge of the. Um, I'm more worried about the 140 maple. End. Yeah, where the houses are. See yeah. the or, uh, orange, oh. green, and blue? If you don't mind. Just sure. Yep, so. So starting blue, with that dark blue. The dark blue is yeah. a flood plain line. Okay, thank you. 62. Um, the orange is 100 foot buffer. Okay, thanks. On the wetlands. Uh, green is 50 foot from the wetlands, and then the light blue line is the wetland line that was flagged. Oh, so. thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. So Anybody else? Sure. I'll entertain a motion to extend. Yeah, we asked for, for a two year extension. I understand if the board only wants to go for a year. Well, once you, get, once you get the year, won't it be three years after that? Yeah, once mm -hmm. you file your notice of intent and it's a uh, Order conditions are issued. It would be good for three years after yeah. that, with the possibility of extending. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'll make that motion. I'll second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, next we have 188 Matfield. I'll read that into the record. Under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Mass General Law is amended, and the West Bridgewater Wetland Protection Bylaw Rules and Regulations. The West Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing February 19th, 2019, in the McDonald Brown Conference Room, 65 North Main Street, for a request of determination of applicability filed by the applicant Land Planning, Inc., on behalf of Brown Builders, Inc., for the demolition of an existing dwelling with garage and to construct a new single-family home with amenities within a 100-foot buffer of an isolated wetland in an isolated wetland subject to flooding at 188 Matfield Street. We're open. Good evening. Uh, Stephen Rye with Land Planning. I'm here uh, representing Don Brown, who owns the owns property here. Uh, the property on Matfield Street, number 188, is down by the power lines. So you're heading down the off of Main Street, and you can come down from the first shop curve. There was an existing drawing, uh, 188, in that area. So you get about right there on the plan. It's kind of on the left-hand side, shaded lightly. Uh, that's where the existing dwelling resided. And there's a garage in about the area where the proposed house is. So those, that was demoed about three weeks ago, um, and now we've applied with an RDA to you to get uh, confirmation but for the rest of the work that's going to be done out there. Uh, we've got an isolated wetland and the land subject to flooding, isolated land subject to flooding, which is within the power easement. We've identified that uh, with flagging here. And in this area shows a 50-foot buffer to that and a 100-foot buffer to that. And there's a buffer under your own town regulations to not the state by one. Uh, what protection is So we're doing the work we're doing. No, that's a 50. It's already been demoed. We've got an existing cesspool that was about 40 feet off of the wetland area. 
We're putting the septic, the new septic system, the federal fire system, uh, for the septic tank and leaching chambers, uh, 73 feet off of the wetland line. Yeah. And the uh, house, the new house will be 57 feet away from the line rather than well, the at least 35 feet. Well, from the 50 foot? I'm sorry? From the 50 foot? It's going to so be 57 feet from the wetland line. 18 line. feet. Yep. So how far is it away from right the 50 here, foot? Right it's seven feet off of that. Oh, on the back corner. Jeez, there's not going to be much, much room for a yard then on that corner. Well, we're leaving, we're leaving enough room for them to be able to put a garage on the right hand side. And we're moving the driveway from the left to the right further away from the left. But the well. will, will there be any problems with a, such a small. Well, you to get around the house, it seems like? I understand that this is already disturbed. They've already filled in the existing foundation. And that's part of the existing yard. There's no vegetation that's going to be taken out there. It's it's all just grass from the backyard. But still, seven feet. If you put up a fence, I mean, they might complain. Oh, there's not much room to. I don't know. I'm just thinking. There's not much room between. Well, we weren't anticipating putting up a fence on the fence. No, no, I understand that. But I'm just saying it's like you try to. You don't want to see them going over the seven feet into the fifty foot. Doing anything, I'm saying. Well, it, there's got to be a little bit of grading allowed in that area because it's an existing house that's been filled that's within that 50 foot area. So that's got to be leveled out. So, so the original house grass. was 35 feet off yeah, the off of the wetland. Off of the wetland. So you we're pushing it back now to oh, to 57 feet. So and it's two feet further away. From cesspool that. was 40 off of it. Cesspool was 40, and now the septic system is going to be 73 feet. What's the difference in the size of the houses? Uh, you know, it looks pretty, pretty much the same size house. It was just a different shape. The other one had a lot of bow bouts and add-ons to it. It was an old house, uh, but this one's just going to be a thirty by thirty-six foot house, so not that large. So the fifty demarked here is the new new fifty. That's yeah, the fifty that's always been there from that one line. Yeah, well, I, I yeah, I know what you're saying. I'm just wondering if it needs to be marked. So is there any, you, well, control. what we're proposing as far as erosion controls is that along the top of the slope where the end of the vegetation is from the power lines mm -hmm. is to put a siltation control along that area. Yeah. And then in the back, we're going to take a little bit of the backyard with some brush in the backyard we want to clear out just to have them have a little bit of an area for a play area or a pool in the future or whatnot. But that's outside of the 50 foot anyway. But the, would the owners know where that 50 is? Well, what we have markers? That's well, this, this is a um, request for determination. So we could make a determination with a condition if you, um, if you would like it to be that way. Can you show the commission where the existing yard ended? Um, so see this? This is okay. an existing brush line that comes along here in the power line. Where's the property line actually on that? The property line is right here. It's the dark line. The dark line. Right. Not the dotted line that goes up. No, that's the that's easement? easement line. Yep. Okay. So the property line is here. This is the easement. Right. And you'll notice so that... So we're actually 20... Easement no, sorry, the power. 20, right. Uh, the power company easement. has an easement oh, okay. all the way all right. up on this side. Okay. And you'll notice the uh, scallop line that's very faint yes. running along the property line. And then um, behind where the old house used to be, it, it ran um, from the property line to the right as you're looking at the plan. Yep. They're, they're planning to cut a little bit back into the backyard, but that's outside the 50-foot. Right. So in effect, um, the existing yard always went up to the property line and was approximately uh, uh, four, 30 feet? So you're probably around 30 feet. 30 so, feet yeah. off of the wetland. Right. So uh, but into the 50. You could ask... But into the 50. Into the 50, yeah. So you could ask them to put um, signs along where the yard used to be. I mean, I think that would be fair. I mean, to take back Something that had already always been a yard might not be fair, considering what they're doing, taking the cesspool 
uh, 40 feet away from the wetland and making it a new Title V system 73 <coughs> feet away from the wetland, mm -hmm. taking the house that used to be 35 Within feet it. off the wetland yeah. and moving it out to 57. But I, I definitely feel that um, maybe a, a new family moving in there should know that um, the wherever you decide those uh, markers should go, that beyond that they can't disturb it. So it's either along the what always was the yard or at the 50 if that's what you would like. I mean, moving the house further away is definitely a, an improvement from what was there. Right. Um, right. And unfortunately, we know what easement's going to be dealt with with the power company. But you're not going to ever get anything to yeah. improve on that situation. Right. I mean, the 50 foot's been previously disturbed. I'm not quite sure That's how much the key, more. usually, is not previously disturbed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. If this were brand new construction, it would be a different story. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We would be proposing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. But in the same sense, we also. <coughs> Like to get whatever we could is remediation to improve previous disturbance mm -hmm. to the 50 foot in the wetland area. Um, and the, re the reason we're asking this generally yeah, is if we don't right. mark or the wetlands, there's been encroachment all the time. <coughs> the owners will encroach beyond unless some mark it. Yeah. Unless you cut it So we could. Is there a natural buffer now? Uh, just the, what's the edge of the existing yard, and and they ran the sill fence right along the yeah, existing yeah, edge. Yeah. So I don't know. We so we, like, we could condition a, a negative a, a negative determination with right. having um, PVC markers with signs along yeah. that line. Yeah, yeah and then basically it's probably going to just be yard anyways, grass. Right. 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 So it's not like they're going to put a pool in that area or. Yeah. Uh, they can't do it anyways. There's not enough room for it anyways. No. In the side yard. Yeah. 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 Well, and everything behind the house would be then outside the 50 yep. anyway. Yes. So yep. they could put a pool out there if they wanted a garden or right. whatever. Right. So it's kind of, it'll improve a lot. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's grass. Such pool's gone. Yep. I'll cover it out. So do we need a. The only other thing I would ask is we're going to have to grant a waiver for work within the 50 foot. Yeah. And the shed to the right <laughs> on that cuts to the property line. Yeah, yes. it's a little little located a little over the line, is it? It just looks like a little. It is a little. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, That's for the, uh, the homeowner to, to deal with whether he wants to deal with it or not. The uh, owner um, of that pro the adjacent property came in and talked with us about uh, that situation and. She mentioned she's gonna. They're gonna move it. It's okay. a storage trailer with a roof. On oh, top. okay, okay. All right. Anybody have anything else? So no. you thought that we should have a signs and posts and what else? And just the fifty waiver. foot waiver. Fifty foot waiver. Yeah. Okay. It's not yeah. along the property line. Right. Yeah. So we have two uh, motions. Yep. I'll entertain a motion to issue a negative three with requiring the wetland markers along the 35. Line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved, and I'll entertain a motion to grant a waiver for work within the 50 foot. Make the motion. I'll second it. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Considering the demo's already been done. <laughs> I mean, the waiver should have. Huh? A motion to close the hearing. <laughs> Mo made it. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Oh, you're here. You got here. That's good, Michael. <laughs> and this Pleasant Street. Uh, we? This is Scotland Street and then Crescent Street. Oh, all righty.
Go ahead. We're open. We'll get that done next since you're here and the other. Right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Koska. I'm here representing the homeowners of Paul Milligan and his wife. Um, I cleaned up the plan that I had given John, so I'll give the commission on this clean up the plan with an actual mm. title block on it. Um, from my understanding that this is a meeting to discuss with the commission and John doing an existing conditions plan to determine um, what yes. may be done on this site to rectify any issues or problems that uh, you know, I'm not completely in um, uh, up to speed on them, but uh, uh, yeah. we went out there and we uh, tied into the existing top of foundations. What I did do is I went to the Board of Health, I got the as-built plans, uh, uh, um, land planning had done the original plans, and uh, so I got the septic plans and I got the as-built plans. With the as-built plans, we were able to establish uh, top of found, uh, foundations. We um, did the existing topo where the houses were located, uh, improvements such as uh, driveway and, and so forth. What I did also do is in taking just for the commission's uh, benefit, I took the three septic plans that were done conveniently. They were done all at the same scale. And uh, you can see that the lots basically had a 66 to 68 existing. And it looks like due to the septic systems being a higher water table there, um, the top of foundations on lot 8, uh, we're proposed at 76, 74 at the subject property, and uh, 74 uh, next door. I think that these were all fairly close. But the other thing is you can see the extent of the fill that was uh, intended when the septic plans were done. Um, I also found on an asphalt plan that there was a wetland line, and I can show you that. I have the file with me. And uh, that being said, there was a wetland line in the 50 and 100 foot shown here. But on the original septic plan, I scaled in these flags that were on the asphalt, and I showed the 50 and the 100 foot buffer zone. So we're basically here to get some direction from you know the commission and in uh, John with uh, his efforts to look at the site and see what might be in order to whatever issue the neighbors have here or the owner <laughs> that a neighbor has uh, um, being, you know, just asked to try to bring this thing to uh, um, some kind of remediation. Put it back to the way it was. Jeez, uh, I'd hate to take the houses away from them. <laughs> Not the houses, just the dirt. Oh, um, well. You put it there. Lee let uh, through the chairman. Like I say, when they did this plan, it had to fill in to elevate. Oh, to I understand that. Do the separation to the right. groundwater. Table. I understand that. So with that, what they did was they came out at least 15 feet of, as per state code, sloped off, uh, kept it level for 15 at the top of the uh, top of the system, and then sloped off at three to one. Um, so to do it differently, yes, they could have put in a retaining wall or something like that, but uh, uh, I guess fill is cheaper than concrete retainer walls or boulder walls. Or come in front of us first. I mean, looking at everything in between, let's see, dwelling 143 and 153, yep. the amount of fill that has been put in between that and looking at the elevations of the ponding area that's now in the front versus the elevation of the wetland line where it is, it looks like that was always intended to be a drainage swale area, and it's not draining anywhere currently except just collecting water. Yes. Uh, um, in between the houses. In between the houses. I did go by there, and I don't know at what stage I went by there, but I did notice that there was some uh, standing water here. 
um, in this yep. area. It's been there for from, a while. Yeah. From the topography, it appears that it goes from 69 to about 68 level with the uh, property line. And then in some spot shots here, it goes uh, uh, 66, 9, 66, 7, 66, 8, 66, 9. There is a drainage swale here that was 66.6, 66, 66.9 there, and it looks like uh, it's at 66.3 and 65. So I think that the when it rains, that the flow is from a northerly to a southerly direction, but I'm not positive on on that. I've never been there while it's raining to see what happens there, but. If that's one of the issues, is to grade this out properly so that it, you know, gets to the drainage ditch where this pipe's going underneath these driveways, so which will take care of a percentage of the water. But considering the rainstorms we've had, yeah, and the significant overflow needing to get to the back, which is only going, you're talking sixty-seven, sixty-six, eight, sixty-six, seven. 67.2, 67, 67.5. Right, right. I mean, it's yeah. going to go this way to a point, but once you yeah. get three feet of water in there, yeah. it's Is not this, all going to go along this. this. Right, it seems like this elevations? front portion yes. will be right. taken current. this way, after but not the, right. all after of the it fill. can go that way, and it seems the pond in that uh, in that area there where there's probably in the micro topography a little split. In the and before the fill went in, there was a lot more vegetation in there. Uh -huh. Which helped absorb a lot of that rainwater that's collecting now. Um, right. It basically was a vegetated berm in between the two pieces of property, and now it's clear cut with nothing. Do you know what the elevations were before Previous? the fill got there? Um, the only thing that as built just showed the elevations of the septic system and no final grading or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so be, be, the only thing I can say is this: before it was, you know, before anything was built, this was the way these were supposed to look with the grading. What was the last grading on the as-built at the lowest point from where the buildings were? Uh, let me see what I got. Them I mean, if it's I don't know if I can answer that question, Mr. Chairman. This is rationale for filling. To make that driveway better. He uh, wanted to increase the driveway. But he put it all back. In. Right. <laughs> all the way around. Yeah. Now it's just for that. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's so I, I mean, I didn't do the original work, so I, I, I don't know if I can answer that. But here is, here's the asphalt plan. You can see the wetland line back here in the fifty yep. and the hundred foot buffer zone. But as you can see, the only elevations that are, are given here for the, the top of the foundation in the septic system. This is the one for number 153. As you can see, there's also a wetland line there. And this is the one that is the 143. And it shows it there. But again, um, I, don't, I, I can't tell you what was there prior to this fill being added, um, let's say, what, in the last six months, would it be? About at least yeah. Is that six months. Only five. Yeah. Right. So that's what I have to go on um, is when they were first approved by the Board of Health. Who was approved? To put the fill in? Um, when these were the plans oh, that yeah. went to the Board yeah. of Health yeah. to facilitate the, um, the installation of the septic system to meet Title V. And then when the plan, uh, when the as-built was done for the system being in and the foundation, um, the, I guess the town does not require a final grading as-built. So between this time, which was roughly uh, in 07, this one was 07, this one was 06, and this one was uh, 06 also, um, I don't have any information as to what the grading was probably to the latest activity, let's call it. I can, I can only speculate that perhaps it mimics something like this, but I can't tell you that um, in, with any kind of uh, um, uh, surety. So well, we know for a fact the back part's got to get cleaned out as a starter. 
any of the fill that went in to the 50 foot. Um, and looking at the amount of water that does pond back there, I'd almost suggest going to the 100 foot line to give that water a place to go so it's not being forced somewhere other than their property. Because at this point, Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's all going southerly. From what land planning had, they had a 66 and a 68 here. What we did recently, we still have that 66, 67, 68 here. So, as far as I can tell, that there hasn't been um, much filling at all to the rear of the houses toward the highway. But and there again, the, you guys kind of... But because of the filling, all the water's going this way. And it's puddling up back there, along taking some of the fill with it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to say it again, but... Do you want me to chime in? John? Yeah, yeah can you? Right. All right, I, I worked up some plans that uh, Mike had given me earlier um, <clears throat> to take a look at. So... These were what was proposed to the Board of Health. Um, I looked in our files to see if we had any filings for these, these lots, because at least these two here, this one over here, uh, closer to um, going towards Bridgewater, uh, was well outside the 100-foot buffer. So here's the buffer line here. Right. Why we don't have two filings on these, I can't understand because clearly these plans did show uh, that there was going to be some filling towards the uh, wetland or within the 100 foot buffer. Could be that the files have disappeared or they were never, never filed in the first place. So if we fast uh, reverse rewind whatever it is, um, the past, into the past. This was the house that the real estate agent owned. And she had called uh, way uh, back at the, be almost at the beginning of the year, complaining about uh, the owner of 153, sorry, the, the, um, the lessee, the leasey, sorry, the leasey of this house at 153. At the time, the current owner was leasing it and didn't own it. That would have been August 6th or earlier. Or earlier, yes. Well earlier than August 6th. Yes. Okay. So um, she, caught, she asked me to go out and take a look at uh, the activity that the, uh, the person that was uh, leasing the property was doing, which uh, he was riding dirt bikes from about where this well is all the way to the back, around the yard and back back this way, and uh, felt that there was some wetland violation. And I went out and um, I could see that there was no wetlands in this area between the street uh, back to this point here, but then I could see that the back had a chicken coop and the backyard was all the way up to the highway fence, which is the back property line. So um, the there was really no activity other than a, probably the construction of a chicken coop in the in the backyard. And so I had to report to her that there really wasn't anything that we had any jurisdiction on at that point. So thinking back again, there was a clear swale all the way between the two properties to the rear. Um, a few months later it goes by, I'm on vacation and I get a, I get a message from Tim, do you know anything about the filling that's going on at 153? And uh, I mentioned to him just kind of what I just told you and he says, well, take a look at these pictures. And I was amazed at what, what had transpired. So. Um, this area is was supposed to be a garage which uh, didn't get built, but it, 
roughly the driveway came up and um, the ground was somewhat flat adjacent to the house. And then it sloped down just about what you see here to the bottom of the swale. But once the filling started, it's what you see on the plan. That hasn't changed now since uh, we asked them to stop the activity there. So that brings us to this plan here. And I like to sometimes look at plans uh, <clears throat> as if you're standing in the street looking at it. And so I've kind of rearranged the, the look to the plan here. Can everybody see it? I'm yeah. turn it a little bit. Here. Just a little bit, yeah. There you go. We don't have any. Oh, we do have the audience. Okay. So the green. <laughs> All right. Could have been better, huh? So the green is the property line. And we now have a good idea of where the property line is. Uh, from uh, Mike Koska's survey. The uh, collection of the water that's now occurring is in this area here where you see this red. That's elevation 67. And uh, as you go back towards the highway, it rises up so the water can't get out there and down like it used to go. It also seems like it's a little bit low here and the water can't get into the country drainage system that runs along this side of Scotland Street all the way down to the river. Well, this really um, turns into a, a real marshland past the last house going towards Bridgewater, but it, all of them have driveways with culverts under it. Some of them seem to be operating fine, others seem to be uh, blocked up a little bit. So if this was made to drain into the culvert system, uh, country drain system and go underneath the culverts of the driveways, that would eliminate part of this ponding situation here. The way this is now graded, which I, I believe is different than what I had seen back in uh, early June, let's say, uh, prevents the water from coming down here. But you could take and split this and let this water go this way and then grade the the site so that the water collecting between the two houses goes this way. This red line here is the same elevation. This is 67, this is 67. So it rises up and then it comes down. So once it gets to back to this point, it's 67 and then 66 is this orange line. Now you notice the orange line uh, is just a little bit onto the subject property, but the majority of the orange line is on the uh, other abutter. And I've got pictures, historic pictures, when there was a shed here, it's no longer there, that shows this water ponding. So this poor lot has always had a ponding problem of water. So um, there's a couple of things that can be done to try to rectify it is to um, when we did a site inspection, there's a little bit of a hump that's in this area here that's preventing the water from draining out into the uh, wetland that runs along Route 24 from Route 24's construction. So getting to uh, what Lee has always maintained is this is probably a very wet uh, piece of agricultural land right at the beginning. Uh, perhaps if they had filed for this with the commission, and that was before my time, um, maybe the commission may not have allowed it, I don't know, but uh, it doesn't seem as if the commission was given that opportunity. So, Also looking at historical photographs, the tree and brush line was much farther into the properties coming, this way, yeah. coming in, and there was never disturbance that far back. Even when those houses were built, it looked to be eight, nine years after the houses had been there, there was a change gradually to the back. So there's been encroachment over the last 10, 15 years that we've been seeing. So to help alleviate this abutter's problems, I, I would say that this area, should, in any design that's going to be done to try to rectify this, should uh, try to 
get this water out of here and into the wetlands. It's probably not very much of a change in elevation, but uh, rather than uh, making it stay the way it is, I think by reducing a little bit of the uh, hump that's there, uh, it would get into the wetlands. Uh, another thing that could be done is uh, put in some type of a swale here so that any water running off of uh, subject property doesn't go on to the abutter and it, it's a, and it's directed to the back. So three things, uh, make the water go into the country drain system in the front, create the swale to the back so that nothing collects in this area and allow this to go in here. Uh, if the two neighbors wanted to work out something, they could uh, level that out to uh, minimize the amount of ponding or if they can't work things out together and if the commission didn't want them to, um, they would have to put in some type of a drain, uh, swale here to prevent 153's runoff from getting into uh, 130, 155 is it? 155, I don't have my reading glasses. <laughs> so prior to that, 155 or whatever it is, 155 is <clears throat> here, 153, and 143. They, he has never come in front of us about having problems of wetness in the back. This one here? Yes. I, I don't believe he has. <clears throat> I don't believe it either. So granted, even in the past, before the houses were there, that was probably like it's wet agricultural land. The houses were built the way they were built because of the wetness. Yeah. So everything was fine until... 153, basically, I guess you could say, took it upon himself to illegally change the topography, topography of t to make the driveway wider by adding fill. Well, and there was n and there was no one correction. Yep, I do have pictures before this all occurred, based on the fact there was a shed here, and uh, ever since I've been out there, the shed's now gone. And it shows this guy's had water ponding on his property but before. Before, I understand that, but he's never come in front of us right. with that problem since he's on the house. Right. So he understands what he had out there. Yep. So this, the one next door, just seemed like it added to it, yep. well, which would be causing more of a problem, which I can understand him now having a problem. And, with. and yes, I think, you know, the grades are going yep. in that direction, yep. so it would create more of an issue here and actually probably expand this out even more. So this whole thing would have not have been a problem with any of this if just come in front of us if you wanted to make fill put in some fill then we could have probably told them to do everything. Pull it back to the edge to, either, oh, either sure. get an engineer plan with a retaining of, yeah. wall put and a, put sure. a swale in yeah. so you yeah. don't affect sure. your neighbor all those things. So sure. like I said my problem is do it illegally, replace it back the way it's supposed to be. Try to fix it the way it's supposed to You're going to be more sensible. It's, uh, I don't know, I just don't understand how. It's like we slap the hand and that's okay. No, I, Not I to say it's okay, but you got to fix it. I think um, that this should have had a um, stormwater mm -hmm. application because of the amount of disturbance. Uh, it should have required uh, wetland filing because yeah. of the proximity to the to the wetland. Uh, and you are right, during a normal process of both the wetlands and the stormwater, we would have spotted mm -hmm. things that says, no, this is not a, a good idea. Or if the current engineer was working on it, he would understand these things and automatically put it into yeah. the design. Were there any markers out there to let no. somebody know and that this? No, in fact, it wasn't until they've done yeah. now their survey, there was always a question where this green line was between the two of them. So was he, ha did he have any way of knowing mm -hmm. what was going on? Nothing. He, so he just assumed that if he, he put in his driveway, he graded, he was... He was okay. Yeah. He did the way he wanted to do So, it. but how was he, can, how was he supposed to know this ahead of time? I mean, Could have come in front of us. but but how does he know he has to do that if there's no markers out there to say that there's there's concern for the wetlands out there? How is a regular person supposed to know that? Right. 
usually what happens when you go to a closing, a title attorney is supposed to research, is there any order of conditions, right. are there any certificate of compliances, is there a clear title? And it seems that with uh, from the beginning, um, there wasn't anything that would indicate to a um, a potential buyer of the lot or a lot and a house that there was anything that was, uh, you know, that should be uh, adhered to. Right. Um, if there was, and there was, you know, um, the proper channel sort of went through the town, I think that, you know, the owners would have come forward because they would have been bound but by... But he was a lease, leasey. He was doing it. He didn't even own the house. He was leasing the house like at the I time. Like I say, I don't know mm. the lease. He owned the house. house or He's the builder in town. Not, He's done know. building in town. Right. The thing I is, these don't I change if we don't change the protocol of the situation. <laughs> if there's no paper following no, these places, we're going to be doing mm. the same thing over and over and over again. And that's I, that's why I have a problem with not marking wetlands like before that when, you know. That's we why have we're doing to, that. Yeah, exactly. We have to, they have to, people have to be aware or... You can't hold them. But they also have to be aware, too, if they're building right. something, too, they got to get a building permit. I've yeah, most that, people know that. I've seen that, though, it hasn't happened. They didn't right. realize it. But until they're recently... Do. But bringing that much fill in, yeah. you sh it should have, I mean, right. that, been yeah. a red flag exactly. to somebody. To that, ask somebody. Yeah. And the neighbor, of course, had complained about it, and we went out and... Well, that's how we get most of our... I understand that, but like I said, that's quite a bit of fill. Right. I mean, that's something that you just... Right, now, that should have been a... You know, that's where I can see maybe you should have rethought that. But, but, but again, there's no trail. There's no warning for any of these people, even up to, well, we know. We've seen it too many times, and it's just, I don't know. I just but don't we've also seen they'll put markers, though. Haven't we put markers in yeah, the people's people stuff, down. too? Yes, true. Right. So, I mean, it's just, true. what are you supposed to do to them? Right. Oh, I didn't see well, the markers? Well, that's different. If you go down and you kick down a marker and you start <laughs> filling in the wetlands, that's a they different can, ball game. They can take them out, too. Yeah. We, uh, that's why we have to step that up, too. We had an incident, uh, if you recall, um, I won't mention the um, address of it, but uh, it involved where um, a landowner clear cut into the wetlands, and it was quite a, maybe even a year ago now, mm -hmm. and we worked through that whole thing. Um, but the builder was required that built all the new homes in this development was required to put the markers at the 50-foot setback. And as part of the certificate of compliance for the builder when he's selling the house to this new owner, requires an inspection and I go out and I take pictures of the PVC pipes with the markers. So they were clearly in and when uh, I went out because I heard about the clear cutting out into the wetlands, those markers were never anywhere on the lot. But if you look to your left, they and you look to your right, yeah. the markers were in, and then all, mm. all of a sudden disappeared. So that's so clear. See, and that's a clear-cut situation. That's yeah. that's obvious. But when you, you have somebody that that is totally naive to, you know, they got to get the message out. There has to be a way. A, lo a lot of people buy their their land, right. and they say, I've, My got, land. I've right. got an acre of land. I'm going to use it. It could be that only one third of it is usable and the rest is all wet. Right. And that's why I have a problem with the uh, building square that is part of the zoning. You can have that building right. square way out into the wetlands and still comply with the shape of the lot. And that's what I always say too. West Bridgewater, Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater. It doesn't say water at the end of them for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is solvable. This, yeah. this right. It is solvable, yeah. The, the other thing that I find too is that you know, uh, sometimes in a, an attorney that's really doing his checklist, 20 years later we'll see that there is a order of conditions but no certificate of compliance. Um, I've been, you know, at times uh, it might be two, three, four owners down the line and an attorney comes along that, you know, perhaps does a more thorough job than the previous attorneys and finds that, hey, by the way, um, you've got to get a certificate of compliance on this piece of property before it can close. And, you know, I, I, I think as time goes on, the Wetland Protection Act, I know 1973, seems like a, a 72, I think it was, 
is a you know seems like a long time ago, but you know um, uh, we're progressing into you know uh, when I first started, you never heard of a town oh, having a conservation right, agent. Right. For me being you know, on, yep. on the board for quite a while now, mm -hmm. well, I'll, the, I'll admit, like even in the beginning, we didn't do anything like this in the yeah. beginning. Right. We're just yeah. as the years have gone, you know, we're getting. I, you know, change doesn't come easy, and I think with that, you know, you see what the flaws are, and as time marches on, there's always going to be something that slips through the cracks, but hopefully sure. the majority is, uh, um, you know, overseen and, 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 and so forth. So now, so, so the other thing is, uh, what would be more cost efficient to do it, like a retain, just say, like doing a swale and all that stuff, or removing the fill out? And put it in the back to the way it was. What's more cost efficient for the owner? If you kind of want to look at it that way, I mean that's how I'd be looking at it. I, I think correcting swale. the uh, drainage and swale problems would be less expensive than removing it. Okay. Yeah, that would be with a um, you know with a uh, probably a, a smaller machine. Don't need a big D eight or something like that. <laughs> no, he's already used that small, already. So. A small machine. <laughs> And then, you know, to loam and seed it so it stabilizes the slope and the slopes and makes, you know, it'll make them look like something. Like, And in time, people will plant trees and hopefully take care of the yards. And, you know, uh, sometimes if that doesn't happen, sometimes uh, houses change hands and maybe the next folks will be better tenants. So at this point, we're going to require a filing and some plans. And by getting... Everything moved out of the 50 foot and getting the swales put in and seeing if the neighbors can come to an agreement to get the drainage fixed in the back corner. And some markers. And, and oh, yeah. right. You know, Once the filing's in, right. we can require the order conditions to put the markers in right. at the 50 foot. Um, no, the water going back towards onto the state property, that has nothing to do with them. It's well, not going to affect them. Oh, they wouldn't complain. <laughs> It, it's something really happens. not going to affect it uh, because the highway itself is so much higher up that it's not going to. But I mean, just the property on the property, or you know, the state's not going to allow them to come in front of us. Or something they'll get the notified, but the natural it? topography already is sending yeah. it there, so okay. it's just. It, and it is probably draining this way. Okay. The other question I recall, John, was to the front of the property on the right side. Where the neighbor to the right contended the trees and brush were cut down, was that now on his land? From not um, hers, or from what I remember, um, walking out there before any of this all happened, uh, when the trees were there as well. That um, the well was always, which is right at the end of my pencil here, mm -hmm. was always clearly um, what appeared to be on her property. Um, and there were no trees from that point towards her property, and all of the trees were from the well going back towards the uh, subject property. So my uh, estimation is that there were no trees cut on her property. Okay. Okay. Now, so but, but it wasn't until we had this plan that I could even come up. With she that. said you couldn't even see. It, it, it was blocked out. There was uh, most mostly thick. Underbrush, but mm -hmm. it appears to be all on his property. Okay. Now, thinking a little bit into the future, so if this all gets taken care of with swales, the lawn gets put in, everything gets stabilized. The gentleman wants to pave more of his driveway now that he's got a bigger footprint to do it. He's going to have to do something with the water on that. Right. So he's going to have to come in front of us to do it. Yeah, or uh, could be Someone. configured yeah. into the design if they already know. But if they don't, yes, they would have to come back. Into the future. So that's something else that's going to have to be put on um, the agreement. Okay. Just so he knows in the future. Right. Because that's going to change water right. on somebody else's property, could possibly. So. Yeah. I think well, he's fortunate that, that bad, yeah. there are some solutions that aren't going to break the bank. Yeah. You know, versus having to take it all out and redo it, and I think uh, I think the solutions you fellows or you brought up, John, make it a lot easier on. Huh? Still has to file after the fact, though. Yeah. For both the stormwater and for the 
wetlands. Yes. And maybe while he's doing it, clean up the front of the country drain, top of water flow. I think that would solve uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the front. Yeah. So you would go back and say, "This is what we're planning." Mm -hmm. What I would do is I would, you know, hopefully retain a peer <laughs> what we just talked about, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and reiterate that uh, you know the the pipe under the culvert and any along the ditch there to you know clean up any debris, um, clean out the pipe, swale towards the front so that it can meet the the, uh, uh, the country part. swale yeah. in the front, in the rear uh, redirect it. Um, towards the back and along the property line to the southern property to create a swale and to take a look at the micro topography to see if it can get into the wetland system that uh, uh, is just over the property line. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk about the future a little bit, any expansion plans, and see if something can be incorporated there. Notice of intent and stormwater management application. Sound about right? Yep. Yep. I won't remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> Watch TV tomorrow. Yeah. It's, on, it's, it's on, on TV. TV. Huh? It's on tapes. So. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. For, You're welcome. You know, giving me some guidance on this. And I'm going to pass it along and see if we can uh, uh, rectify this. You didn't want any form of motion coming out, right? No. Is there a time limit involved here? Or? Well, spring time's coming, as yeah. we know that it's grass growing season. I would think that uh, it might be nice to um, take advantage of the growing season to try to rectify it quickly. However, you know, as you know, we keep getting either snow or rain or both. <laughs> right. And right. Uh, it would be very. Uh, it, it's got to be done in a, in a proper time because sometimes you can get into a job like this and you get in there to meet a time frame but you're doing more harm than good where sure. you know, and right. the machine will sink out of sight right. and uh, and you made more of a mess than you had. Yeah. You're just doing the plans. You're not necessarily going to do the work. Right. But I do intend to you know, get the uh, proper documentation and filing before this commission you know, you're not going to see me this time next year or something. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, he'll be within, I would say, a month yeah. or two. We month just have to deal with him getting it done after that. After that. Yeah. But at least, you know, and then he's got a plan to work with. There'll be a benchmark established and, and, and proposed grades and so forth and so on with spot grades as necessary. Sure. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you very much for your you're time. You're welcome. Thank you. Are, are you giving us one on Crescent? You betcha. Okay. <laughs> and now we'll have an update for 373 Crescent Street. All right. Um, 373 Crescent. Right. I was asked to, again, for the record, my name is Michael Koska. I'm a registered engineer and land surveyor in the Commonwealth of Mass. I am representing 373 Crescent Street LLC and their endeavor to um, do some improvements onto the property that they purchased. Prior to that, I, from what I can gather historically, there was just stuff everywhere. And what they uh, intended on doing is um, cleaning it up. Well, sometimes, you know, you just get a little ahead of yourself. And, but, um, the wetlands were delineated, that's in green, and um, the edge of tree line is in yellow. So you can see from about here to there that the edge of, the, edge of hill is edge of tree line. And this is a BVW, a bordering vegetated wetland, it's basically a red maple swamp. Um, we um, did topography where there has been an, an attempt in this area here to do a, a berm. And this has been a stockpile of material. To my understanding, there were piles everywhere on this site. So they brought the piles into one spot. Um, and there was a berm that was started here. 
we've done a septic plan for this building and this building. We have for the abutters, what we're planning on doing is incorporating the grading of the septic system from the property line over and down and perhaps getting um, some, some more trees in there and um, uh, you know, generally cleaning up the property. From my understanding that historically this was like a boat yard, somebody bought it uh, and there was just stuff everywhere. Um, there's stuff everywhere now, but it's in an orderly fashion um, to some degree. And um, uh, so we're here this evening. Uh, what I submitted to John, where he had some knowledge of the site, is where the previous wetland line was. And this is uh, one of those, again, that um, uh, we're here before the commission to bring it to a point that everybody's uh, comfortable with it. Um, I think uh, they want to work along with the neighbors to, you know, uh, get, you know, some screening in the front here so that when you go down the street, you might see a, a gate, but beyond that, you don't see a hell of a lot. And um, I want to try to uh, get it in a, a fashion where, um, you know, the site is, you know, 100% better than when they they did acquire it. So again, we're here. Uh, I'm here this <coughs> evening to try to get some direction from the commission as to uh, what was uh, there. And again, John has some historical information that perhaps he can share with me and with the uh, commission that, uh, uh, you know, I can again work with this one and come before the board with a proper notice of intent. Uh, it's going to uh, these buildings, uh, the two of them that I've done, um, uh, involve the Board of Health. This one here, we're going to also rectify their septic system there, and uh, it'll probably more than likely require a site plan before the planning board, and um, we're also planning to get uh, proper designation from the Zoning Board of Appeals. So they're trying to bring what was in the past forward into the future and try to do the best they can to conform with the um, uh, the standards of today rather than the standards of 40 or 30 years ago whenever this site was developed previously. What are those buildings now? Um, what are the buildings now? Oh, th this one here serves as a um, um, a uh, like a warehouse. This front part is an office building right here. This is a, another warehouse. This one looks like it was in World War II, where you can see right through it, where it's, it's a metal frame building, but all the sheathing is gone. Mm. So they, you know, bringing that up to par. Um, and around in here are uh, different contractors that have different pieces of equipment. You have a um, concrete, uh, Salisbury concrete has some... Um, uh, storage space here. Um, th there is an excavator person that has some excavators and, and uh, other heavy equipment that you know has his space here. There are um, other vehicles that I guess were left over from previous owners and I guess there are other uh, contractors that perhaps uh, have their vehicles. Their guys come, park their cars, take the vehicle, go off to where they um, do the job and uh, and then come back, leave the vehicles there, and then you know again the cycle repeats the next day. So it's more of a, a like a contractor's yard. Right. So. Good. All right. <laughs> again, uh, like Tosca gave me a copy of the plan uh, ahead of time, and I'll back up. The commission. Uh, got overridden by DEP many, many years ago uh, when this was Universal uh, and uh, Wheeler. Wheeler Company. Thank you. And we, the commission got invited along to go on a certificate of compliance inspection tour with the DEP official. And uh, I had done some research on it and um, the original plan had called for 
some additional wetland filling over here. And so not, not knowing exactly, uh, not having this plan, not knowing exactly what was out there, I was kind of uh, uh, looking at the aerial photos and I had realized that maybe the site hadn't been built in compliance with the approved design. So when I got out there, I'm seeing this edge of woods, just as it's shown on here, and right smack dab is the wetlands right adjacent to the edge of the woods. And I'm saying, I'm not saying anything about they should have filled more or created more. Uh, well, it was actually a stormwater basin that they were proposing in this area, and that would be altering wetlands. So I kept my my lips closed on that <laughs> and was satisfied that this line was the historic edge of the parking or gravel area and all the debris that was in there. I mean, tons of equipment that was rusted out and sitting there. And that beyond the edge of the woods was all wetlands. And I based that on looking at the historical uh, photography. So we have Crescent Street down here, the entrance is here, and then West Street is out in here. So, relying on the historical photography, again, the historical photography shows the same common line. I was able to superimpose the shapes of these buildings and adjusting the scales and what was out there was a edge of woods that looked like this and then came down here and back here. So all of this area here from this red line back to this new green line was altered without um, a stormwater permit which is greater than 15,000 square feet. So that was the first inclination that there was um, a uh, violation, I guess is a word, it seems like a strong word, but um, improper permitting process had not, the proper permitting process had not been followed. Uh, all along, I've always maintained that the current owner of this property has cleaned up piles of asphalt that was dumped by uh, Wheeler Company or Universal Construction. They operated both companies out, out of this site. And I think it was all the same people, but just different company names. They had uh, rusting hulks of equipment, uh, propane tanks, uh, gas tanks that are sitting around in current uh, owner has cleaned that all up. So uh, probably not being aware of the fact there was a stormwater by, by law that anything of 15,000 square feet of disturbance required a, a permit, they went and started clearing in here and that's when I had to issue the enforcement order. So uh, <clears throat> the wetland uh, scientists flagged the, the line where you see the blue line and this area here is an actual orange crosshatch, very small, got um, intruded upon by the tree cutters. So some wetland restoration needs to occur here. This is the 50 foot no touch that got disturbed with this more recent expansion. <coughs> and then the black crosshatch. So the pink line is the 50 foot buffer. So the pink crosshatch is the 50 foot buffer that got disturbed. Uh, this is the uh, outer 50 foot or the 100 foot buffer lines, the golden color there. Um, that was activity that was within your jurisdiction that should have got filed for under the um, wetlands protection and the local bylaw. And then the blue crosshatch is plus that is all stuff that should have been filed under the stormwater bylaw. So I don't have an issue with the clearing that was done in here other than it needed the proper permit and that can be uh, done after the fact and with requirements of handling 
stormwater uh, for what they disturbed. And that would have to be something that um, Mr. Koska and I would go over and see how we're going to handle, uh, based on the topography, any runoff from the disturbed surface, which is now pretty much just gravel. Uh, was, was there anything, other than just a clean up, it's not like it was taking trees down or anything like that, it was just cleaning up the stuff that was on the ground? Well, I think uh, the aerial <coughs> photo shows this was all treed. At one time? Yeah. But no, it didn't, when they were clearing it just recently... Uh, when they cleared it, they cleared from uh, roughly where the... The trees red, and everything? Yeah. Oh. And, and there was equipment probably stashed in there in here and there. So um, okay. Wheeler Company probably would drive a, a old piece of equipment or push an old piece of equipment out through the trees and just leave it there. Uh, so... In, the, in their cleaning up the site, they probably figured the. I'm, I'm not going to speak for them, but you know, normally it's easier to cut the trees down than go take the stuff out of there and clean it up. <coughs> so um, there is a, a way that we can get this back into compliance. Uh, this most likely, thinking how you as a commission um, decide things, would probably have to be restored back to. Uh, a vegetated buffer and the disturbance, a small disturbance in the wetland here has to be comp uh, compensated for by replication. And then as far as uh, they're talking about going through the site plan approval with uh, the boards, that uh, there has to be something that needs to be done with the runoff that's going across here now that it's a change in use and everything, even if it's for the better, uh, with some minor um, stormwater management of some sort for a gravel surface parking lot is usually a swale. Uh, we did it up at um, on Manly Street for the, the trailer rental, uh, the storage container rental uh, property. <coughs> what is it? Mr. Millett. Yes, Mr. Millett's uh, site there. We, we allowed them to create a uh, parking area for these uh, storage boxes and had a small swale that the water running across the uh, gravel parking lot would collect in and then get uh, made to settle out sediments with check dams all the way along it until it finally went into the wetlands. Question on the debris pile that's now been stockpiled. Mm -hmm. How long is that intended to be there and do we need to do something around that, John, now to stabilize it? I know construction sites in town we've had before. We've required something to keep it from. These berms need to have some, of course, by now they may have, uh, or when spring comes around, it may have a lot of uh, weeds and stuff <laughs> on it, but it needs to be stabilized uh, so that it doesn't. I was talking major, the, the big one that's in the 50 foot already. I mean, how soon is that? processed gravel. So, I don't know, yes. <laughs> I own the property to recognize you, yeah. Southbury. Originally, that pile went from that back all the way up past the first building that yeah I mean it right okay. you've done great with the yeah. site I mean I'm not Absolutely. complaining no. of what all you've right. done <laughs> like, uh, the only reason the pile is still there is because you got to stop yeah John told you to stop <laughs> okay much. that's fine sorry and and you know there is what John referred to earlier as an illegal berm or whatever it is and, and I'll be honest with you I thought I was really doing a good thing <laughs> because for years it kept getting pushed and pushed and pushed and I thought the burn was a great way because the material was there like we didn't bring any material on everything was right there we just shaped it and to be honest with you if we could carry it around and continue it I think it would you know it would stop anybody from going out there again not that that's going to happen because <laughs> I'm charge now but it, I think there was like 70 to 100 tons of scrap metal we pulled up there. 550 propane tanks. Oh, wow. 10 trucks, like three low bed trailers, big, huge tanks, and we did a complete 21 on all property, so everything was clean, too. What's the zoning of that? It was, it was industrial, and they rezoned. After these people moved in, they rezoned it for like that year. Oh, Same year they moved to in, they rezoned to, resident, to residential. To residential, so, so that. It's, so it's existing. So what's the what's the in the for the future? What are you planning on doing with it? Is the property we for could, the we, future? 
we plan on redoing the buildings over and just renting out the contracted phase. You, contract you and it's still going to stay residential? Yeah. Well, I don't think you're going to rezone it. I mean, I don't know if that's I understand, happen. but I mean, there's no future. I'm just thinking of the future of planning on putting any subdivision then. Not going to become a housing. Right here on this? Yeah, housing development. No. Oh, oh. You mean a 350 units? Somebody well, else you know, <laughs> if it's own, you may. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm I just thinking in the future, that's all. I wouldn't be here doing this if I was going to do that. <laughs> True. Throwing good money away. No, but I'm just saying. Never, never yeah. know. Can something could so you're only going to keep the variance to keep it as a commercial. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I called the meeting as soon as I bought the property. And it took a little while to get it. But I sat in with John and the building department. The fire chief, the police chief, the town manager, everybody who wanted to be there was there. Because we wanted to go this way and not the other way. And I wanted to make sure we're all... That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah. How much space, yeah, but how much acreage is there? It's 38 acres. That much, wow. yeah. But... Oh. Not yeah. usable. Well, yeah, it's usable. Fuck. Some is. Some so is. There's, there's, there's a couple more entrances into the property up on mm -hmm. the West Street. The fire mm -hmm. and Maroney and stuff. Just thinking, I'm just thinking of the future, that's all. Yeah. But that's something different, though. It would make a nice yeah. highway, highway bound over there, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, so I'm not that one. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that one. <laughs> that's okay, you still got to come in front of us then. <laughs> the flew for a new school. But no, listen, the, the plan is to keep that just, just the way it is. Well, I'm just thinking it could be, it could be, yeah, yeah. Right, it could well, be a solar field thing, too. Nah. I mean, I'm just thinking of what your plans are. No. Okay. I'm not, listen, I'm not that smart. <laughs> so what's in the back beyond those buildings now? Is it all it's cleared just, out? It's all cleared out. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. A gravel, pretty much gravel. So you sort. park trucks back there yeah. and whatever. Well, it looks ten times better than the entire <laughs> ten, hundred yeah. times. I drive I by it all the time. I the camera yeah. everybody's listening to this. <laughs> but the person who was there when we bought it is still there. And it's still a, kind of a on my side. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll make it look better than that. Sorry. <laughs> we'll make it look better, too. hundred year lease. Uh. <laughs> well, good, so we have, good we have, beginning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good yeah. start, and you're heading in the right direction. So, yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah. Thank you. So, um, what I would recommend at this point is, is to, um, to immediately uh, put erosion control barrier along the 50-foot buffer in the area from the edge of the pile yeah. back this way mm -hmm. to the edge of the woods that you got cleared. And then uh, that prevents the 50-foot buffer in the wetlands from any more disturbance or mm -hmm. any more erosion, so sedimentation, that kind of thing. Okay. And then uh, working out some other things with uh, Mr. Koska on how we're going to handle this part of the change in the in the uh, vegetation cover to prevent uh, stormwater impacts, and then the rest of it can come and it might do it all together as part of your overall site plan. But I think in, in immediately the erosion control Stop barrier paved. for this section mm -hmm. here, paved up here, and then okay. we can talk about how we can do the site plan mm -hmm. in conjunction with the other boards. So it's only a small section of. So yeah, maybe about 200 feet from here. Yeah. At one inch of 440. I that is a 140, mm -hmm. yes. And I mean, the pile of gravel that's there, you're going to want to keep that on site to use as the project progresses? Or we're <coughs> we're going to get through. Yeah, we're going to. Or do you want to get it out of there? I mean, no, I just. We're not, we weren't selling it. it was like, it wasn't to sell. We were going to use it on the property. <coughs> okay. I mean, I just. On which way, you know, how we had to do things. Right. Where you stopped, when John said stop, I just didn't. If you wanted to move it and get it out of there. I'd no. rather see it get out of the 50 foot sooner than later. I mean, but if we you want to leave it there, it's stable. It's yeah. not going anywhere. <laughs> that's, that's not looming. That's, that's a reclaimed asphalt. It's not like that's not falling apart anywhere. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. It's right. I mean, if, so. um, but we were planning on using it on site as we, you know, build those three other houses. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you For the driveways <laughs> of the residents? Yeah, yeah. 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 Plenty of <laughs> Be paid. That's good. <laughs> Recycle. So um, I can communicate with them about what that requirement is, and then we can work, Mr. Koska and I, on uh, what we need plus what the rest of the town boards will need. We can incorporate that into the site plan. 
So we made a good resolution. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The neighbors all been happy too. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, driving all by them. there, it's not all of them. There's yeah. been a few bad ones. Well, I'm the bad one. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for the Thank, right. thank, thank you, gentlemen. Evening You're welcome. And, uh, um, I intend to be back sooner than later, you know, because of growing seasons and we'll be here. coming upon us and uh, yeah. um, also better weather and so forth. So we yeah. want to be in place when all the permits, proper permits, so that when the work proceeds, there's no look in, in the rearview mirror. It's only looking ahead. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you Mike. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, we do have a request for a continued public hearing for Lucas States. They have Still continue. Yeah. Yes. And they would like that till the April second meeting. Yes. I'll make the motion. I'd like second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. So move. Um, John, the only other thing I see is the other 249, 251 Pleasant Street. Oh, yes. The DEP appeal settlement update. All right. Uh, the meeting that I was on vacation, and um, <clears throat> if you recall, a, a consultant wetland scientist for Mr. Hargreaves had That's come in page. and talked with you about um, a settlement agreement which I believe is the orange line that you see mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. And um, I had recommended that the commission approve it and uh, waive the 50 foot from the orange line so that they could build here and then everything else was gonna be restoration. So he went back to the DEP with his mm -hmm. suggestion because the. They, the DEP was suggesting the green line. So DEP said, no, <laughs> we want the green line, which is basically this this white line that you see in here or the green line on, on the one that I marked up for you. So uh, Mr. Hargreaves saw the writing on the wall, doesn't want to fight it any longer and is willing to um, settled the appeal by um, a, going with the green line, which is even smaller than what the commission looked at. Um, so this is Pleasant Street here, and this little white box is the big blue building that's there currently. So this would be uh, pretty much where you see the big rubble pile of concrete and so forth. So they've got to remove all of that. Um, it has to be removed uh, in accordance with um, uh, less than desirable solid waste because it was concrete with uh, some mastic sealer on it, which has a small amount of um, asbestos in it, probably not enough to be of any concern, but they have to mm -hmm. handle it differently than um, mm -hmm. just any any type of uh, material. So. He is uh, now um, uh, resolved, has resolved himself to the fact that he only is going to have the green line. Uh, so we are getting back um, from what we approved a lot of additional land that will be either um, restored or left natural to vegetate itself. And so that same um, wetland scientists that it came in would have to drop a restoration plan that would fit uh, the bill for both this commission and the DEP. How far so, back did that go, John? I don't recall. Uh, well, all I know is that considering what DEP has now been able to get and knowing some of the past members of this commission, there are some very happy previous members. This has finally been resolved and to the point that it's gotten I mean, has it been Back. years? 1999. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, yep. That's before. Almost okay. decades. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it's been a long years. time of. No, 10 years. People fighting to get the site. Not 20 years. Yeah, fixed. Um, my only comment would be that 
when we do get the restoration plan, we ask for an invasive plant management plan with it. Um, well, just knowing where that site is and knowing stuff that's around it and natural heritage and the habitat that we're looking at, that it would... Wouldn't it be nice to walk through the woods again? Behoove it to... We'll At least for an establishment <laughs> period, not get overtaken. So what I can uh, do is um, they're they're looking for an answer tomorrow because I think today was really the deadline. But I explained to them that uh, to uh, the DEP people and uh, Mr. Hargreaves that we weren't meeting until this evening. So I think they're okay with a email to go out tomorrow from me. Uh, that would indicate that uh, the commission's on board with the DEP's box rather than Mr. Hargrave's box. And um, I would also add in that we would want an invasive species management plan to be part of the mitigation, or otherwise we're not interested in the settlement. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we are. I, mean, I would think DEP One would be DEP. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's been going on for 20 years. And if it's Lawsuits. just left to fill in, anything's yeah. going to be. Indeed, he's It's so wet. That'd yeah. be the uh, focus point on, uh, on West Bridgewater as you drive by the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that beautiful town. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> and this mo, what can I tell you? You can't, you can't miss yeah. this spot. It's about as. <laughs> um, about as uh, unsightly. <laughs> I don't want to use that word, but um, it's a white elephant. For, <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> farther up north, you have the storage box ones that are sitting right there on the <laughs> on the side of the highway. So you see that, and you see this, and you go, "What is going on?" But this will get cleaned up, and yeah. and you won't see it. And yeah. perhaps that's what attracted DEP's attention to it right away, um, driving back and forth. Mm -hmm. On on 24 to get to 495 to get to Lakeville, yeah. mm -hmm. somebody may have been looking at yeah. that and going, "What is going <laughs> on?" and just had it on their list mm -hmm. and waited for the opportunity and jumped in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the public view like that, mm -hmm. you have to watch out what you're doing. Yep. So I will entertain a motion to agree with the DEP map as attached. Make that motion. I'll second. Move the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will entertain a motion to allow John to send correspondence to DEP um, with our commission with the agreement. And do you want to request or highly recommend <laughs> yeah. an invasive species plan be part of it? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Move the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll move. And I believe in our packets, and I also got the email that there is an open meeting law training workshop coming up in April. And Avon, if anybody wishes to attend, please let the town clerk's office know, because I think they're the ones that are organizing this or putting it together. Does anybody else have anything else? I do. <laughs> I figured there was some of those. <laughs> well, well, please getting that. Uh, is anybody going to Matt this year? <laughs> it's still, I've he's been. I, I have, and I, I've got to actually be busy with a bunch of other stuff. So I haven't actually looked at the agenda to see what's offered. I'm I'm registered, and if anybody's going, we can carpool. If nobody's going, I'll be singing I'll songs <laughs> all the way up to myself. I will get in touch with you tomorrow. I'll look at the agenda today, tonight, and see if the one class I need left to finish my certificate is offered. They, it's pretty expensive for a non-member to attend the one-day, whole-day workshop well, is 185 no, $185. Love that lunch. Yeah. For MAC members, I think it's 125 if I'm not mistaken. That's a lot. That's way up from 85 yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Well, it's like more a than it used to be. That's a living increase. <laughs> well, maybe. This is the last um, monies for the 53D consultant. Bits way. Bits way. Oh, okay. So which one? Yes. The Enterprise Rental site there.
Yeah. What else you got? Um, <coughs> WB Nation. A service contract for the copier upstairs. <laughs> For a year? <laughs> Who negotiated that one? <laughs> the man. Good job. <laughs> that's that's darn good. <laughs> this is it here? No, I've got it. You haven't oh, seen the server time. <laughs> For a year. Oh, I haven't heard you all. I'm looking at that place and $6,300. I'm like, what? How's that? I'm that's the now, did you, <laughs> now, did, now, did you get the toner included? No. No? <laughs> oh, okay. Darn. Okay. Almost a great job. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. That'd be $6,300. Yeah. <laughs> you wish to sign the DOA for Matfield? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I am going to be before the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night for the budget. And I just wanted to mention um, a couple of things that um, there is for the stormwater coordination for the town. Uh, I've uh, suggested four more hours a, a week for me to work on just that alone. Um, and that is something like 8200 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And it seems like an awful lot, but um, I can't divulge the town person that I contacted from a, uh, a nearby town, let's say, who has um, contracted with a environmental uh, engineering company to do their stormwater mm-hmm. management. <laughs> and this year's budget based on their quote from this engineering company to do their stormwater management is uh, $42,000. So are you giving yourself enough? (laughs) No, I'm serious. No, I... I I, I know you. You You haven't seen his mileage expense, have you? (laughs) 20 cents a mile, though. Entertainment expenses, singing along down... <laughs> well, I hear the next convention's in a room and it's by boat. So, so um, what I what I believe is that um, when towns hire out an engineering consulting firm, um, that's not a pen. Oh, sorry. Um, you're paying uh, probably around 120 bucks an hour for the technical people. That are that's what they're being billed at for these engineering companies. So it doesn't take long to add up there. Um, even so, uh, they probably spend a lot of the time of the town employees uh, putting together uh, different programs and asking questions, uh, doing assessments, and those kind of things. And so they you have to add in over their their fee what you're taking away from the work of some town employees to assist these engineering companies to gather their data that they need. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that we don't need to do all that if it's handled in-house. And uh, I put together the notice of intent for the town that was filed with the EPA for <clears throat> about, <clears throat> excuse me, 3500 and that same company that proposed that other one for the nearby town was um, build actually billed for the same product, eighty five hundred bucks. So, you know, I, I understand that these engineering companies have a high overhead and that they have a lot of technical staff working for them and that they have to get the money that they do. But uh, with someone who understands the the process. I think you can get through it with a far less uh, cost to the town. And even though it's, I could just say it's not anything conservation and let the town worry about it, I can't see doing that for West Bridgewater. So 
I'm willing to. T it's a challenge. It's something that um, is going to be uh, something new because we don't, we haven't done it in the past. So it's something new that we're doing, and uh, I look forward to, you know, the the challenge of it. And um, knock on wood, we'll wherever it is here, <laughs> um, we'll get through it and, and satisfy the EPA uh, at the next deadline that we have, which is July 1st. Is this like a one-time? No, it's only ongoing. Go it's, it's ongoing, and it's only probably going to get a little bit more complicated as the years go by, but at, um, if this other town is spending 42 this year, what are they going to be spending mm -hmm. five years from now? So, I, you, you know, as long as we can... To having to have a person do this at some point, an individual just, uh, this is all they do in the town? Some towns have done that and um, hired on one person as a, as a um, salaried position. Right. Uh, I think that's, at this point in time, for the size of the town that yeah. West Bridgewater is in this other nearby community, uh, it's just a little bit too much. It's more for for large um, metropolitan yeah. type towns, a, a Framingham, a, right. a, a Wellesley, uh, something where you've got uh, a lot of infrastructure. And we have a lot of miles, square miles for West Bridgewater, but it's not a town that um, I think you need to, to do that quite yet. So, well, and Someone asked me the other day, we were talking about it, and they said, aren't we watching those things now in terms of stormwater and I said well actually we are but I couldn't tell them what was really new that we're watching now that makes it better than the old way. So for example uh, it's, good, it's a good thing you brought that up. Um, we require stormwater basins in in these uh, subdivisions right. and so part of this stormwater management plan that uh, the town is going to have to uh, abide by is Somebody has to go out and make sure that they're operating properly, that uh, they're maintained properly. Now, we've been trying to put some of the, recently, some of the burden on the uh, developer or the homeowners association or uh, if it's a private uh, entity that uh, they enter into a stormwater agreement where they agree to maintain it so we don't have to, but it would still take inspections to make sure they're complying. Sure. So that's what you're actually doing for these new devices. Uh, part of the requirement is that we go back and uh, monitor what is already in the ground. So um, you go out and you look at a discharge from a uh, manhole, uh, a catch basin, let's say. And if it appears to smell bad and look bad, there could be uh, pollution getting in there mm -hmm. from something like a septic system or people mm -hmm. dumping uh, illicit stuff into the storm drain, now you've got you to clean that up and you've got to find out who's doing it and you've got to rectify it. So those are the types of things that um, you kind of have to manage and, um, and handle on a yearly basis. So that's, that's where we'll be going with that. And then as any new projects, you've got to make sure that, uh, that they're permitted properly which we're actually doing anyway, but you have to have a, a, an outline of what engineers and, and applicants should be submitting to you, which we've started a checklist already. Um, and then you've got the compliance as it's being constructed, so you have to make sure that it's being constructed properly. We, ca we do that now, um, but there may be a time where it gets busy enough where you might need an assistant to go out and do the inspections while somebody manages it in the office. So there may be a time in the future, quite a ways probably, but uh, where you might need that one individual handling just the stormwater all year, all year long. So I don't even think we inspect ours where we live. Yeah, and I mean I don't think so. That's that's when we we should. That's when we say. We, like a homeowner yeah. <clears throat> should be doing that. And so if they weren't, they were going to be penalized. Yeah, I don't that. think it's occurred right. to anyone. That. Well, and when yours was put in, we never had to right. do mm -hmm. anything with a homeowner's thing. But we that probably grade. should have it. <clears throat> so, yeah. so theoretically, on um, yeah. on Luke's, Luke Estates, the one that we keep mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
continuing, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have yeah. to enter into a stormwater agreement, yeah. and they be in the homeowners association, so they'll know about it right mm -hmm. from the start. Right. Right. Whereas your, yours is um, an, a grandfathered or you know existing. The next time you have to pull a permit, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but get you, don't, you don't want it to start clogging up and right. all that no. either. Mm -hmm. so. No. No. Then it gets more expensive to fix. No, you're out there cleaning it now. Mm -hmm. We're Wasn't shivering we're thinking we've been there 12 spring years. And that's spring Meadows is another one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The uh, uh, one that's going up near the blue building that uh, LH Realty, Larry Hargreaves, got permitted for with us, not, not going towards the concrete pile, but going the other way, that... Uh, it, he he's required to have a stormwater management uh, agreement with us, and if you recall, that says that he's got to follow a, a, an inspection process on his own. We have to check him every once in a while, but on his own, he's got to submit reports, and then um, if he doesn't comply with it and it starts to fail, the town can lien his property and go in and correct it and uh, eventually get paid for their services out of uh, the lien that would be put on the property. Mm -hmm. So we are starting to make progress, um, and it, a lot of people will say, why is it so regulated? And I think we talked about tonight, um, Paula mentioned it, where uh, in the past nobody had any clue of what they had to do, and so we are always trying to catch up by um, issuing a violation notice or working with them to take care of the problem. Hopefully in the future they'll They'll all be in writing in the re registry of deeds what they have to do, and uh, there should be no question, but we know that doesn't always work either, but mm -hmm. at least it should take care of a lot of uh, problems. Okay. So, I'm all done. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Yes. I guess yeah. congratulations, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, anything else? Then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Are we off? <laughs>